Now for Liskov substitution principle, basically we want to have our child class to be able to replace or substitute its parent class without breaking the program. Now here you can see this is what it looks like in code. So we basically have our rectangle class, right? And in this case, for our rectangle class, we have our set width and our set height. Notice here we have our width, we have our height. In this case, you can see we basically have also some additional features so that the subclass can be able to inherit, right? So in this case, we have our subclass called square, basically inherit from the rectangle. And in this class, we can be able to set the width. So here you can see we only have width, we don't have height, right? Because the height and the width, they're the same. So we're therefore we're using width for the square so in this case you can see when we set the width we basically have width is equal to w when we set a height you can see notice that we're setting the width is equal to height or equal h and this will basically violate the principle because you can see here if we were to set the width let's say w is equal to for example 5 right we're basically setting the width is equal to 5 and if we're setting the height for example if we were to change it to 6 then in this case, we also have to change the width equal to six. So in this case, this will basically violate the principle because we're not able to make the child class to be replaceable to the parent class. Now to solve this problem, what we can do is we can basically create another parent class called shape with the additional features. In this case, we can just have our rectangle and our square inherit from this shape class. And you can see here for our square, basically we don't have to implement the set height function, right? All we have to do is we can basically implement the set width. And in this case, we don't have to be able to contradict or violate this principle.